Seattle pandemic shut down, day 64. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, fellow pandemic travelers. Can you see, can you see Mount Rainier? It doesn't, it, it looks way more impressive in person than it does on video. Mount Rainier is really something. Oh God. Anyways, it's all so tiresome, isn't it? You've got people false dichotomy about how if we reopen civilization then everyone's gonna die and I don't think that's true then you have well hey if we're it, this is all a hoax and that's all not true there's somewhere in the middle is there's a pathogen it's a threat and we have to do the right thing to counteract the behavior of the pathogen we can do this I believe in us but it's all also become so politicized that it's like, oh, well, it's just Trumpkins think that we can just go back to work because they want their Dow to go back up. And that's really stupid. And if you've said things like that, you, you, uh, I, hate, I hate you. I hate your guts. You're choosing to not understand the severity of the situation. Now, if you go, oh, this is all just like a hoax and like Fauci as a fraud and all that pandemic shit, I just don't think so. You can nitpick Fauci and his career and whatever, but that's just, like again, China didn't cancel its own civilization for a period of time over nothing, okay? They wouldn't do that. They canceled everything for a reason. Now, I hope you're noticing, fellow uh, uh, loyal viewers, the amount of traffic in front of me right now, as opposed to just a few days ago. Oh, oh, I'm seeing brake lights. I'm seeing brake lights. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, part of, my <laughs> part of my purpose in doing these videos was to do some mashups later on. Because it was like, eight minutes from ramp to ramp on my commute. And I've said before, I don't take I-5. I, I, I consider I-5 a write-off. Like, you just don't do it. Unless it's like 10 o'clock at night and there's not a concert or a game. Uh, rush hour, I-5 is just a no, it's a no-go. Figure, figure out something else. Uh, because you're at least going to look at something different instead of just taillights. So, here we are. It's a little denser. It was clearly a little denser than it was. But this is the thing. This is part of what I'm getting at is the false dichotomy of, oh, it's all Trumpkins want to open the economy and they don't care if grandma dies. That's not what's happening, okay? There are a fuck ton of small businesses in the Seattle area that are shuttered, but Amazon isn't, okay? Like, you know... Kroger stores aren't. It doesn't make any sense. We're basically shuttering small businesses but allowing large businesses to keep operating because they're essential but the small businesses are not. And this is a, a talking point that's been repeated by others. It's like, if you own a business, that business is essential to you. And so that at some point, every business, I don't care if it's a button store, uh, it's essential to employing, multi, you know, multiple people, uh, you know, underwriting city property taxes and stuff like that, and sales taxes and stuff like that. Like, this isn't just, uh, well, Amazon can keep delivering stuff to my house, so therefore everything's fine. That's not actually how the local economy works. So, like I said about, about two weeks ago, I have a tweet about this, it's timestamp. About two weeks ago, I said, we have about a week before there's just widespread uh, uh, civil disobedience. I think I said this in another video. It's just, we are looking at an un, we're looking at an insurmountable problem and most people are going to just say, fuck it. I don't care. You can come give me fines. I don't care. I have inventory in my store. I'm going to sell it and I'm going to try to get back into business. Now, every business should be responsible about how they, um, you know, how they open policies about, 
you know, aisles and, and social distancing and all those things, I, I implore you to do those things if you choose to reopen your business. But people are just going to reopen their businesses and start going about their life as normal because they, they're they seeing what... <laughs> I haven't hit my brakes on the freeway in months. <laughs> Uh, they are going to go back to business as usual or as usual as they can be. And again, most I think most people get it. They get that there's a really awful thing going on. And they need to change their daily habits and practices. Like that, that I think people get it. And that's like me spraying stuff down with alcohol. A few weeks ago even, people would kind of look at me weird like, oh, that's an overkill. Now I get more, oh, thanks for doing that. Oh, thanks for keeping us safe. Like people get it, okay? Uh, at, at a large enough number, a large enough scale that it's going to be impactful, right? So when we go back, go back to normal, quote unquote, it's not going to be exactly the way it was before. People understand social distancing a whole lot better now than they did before. And they understand like, you know, hygiene and stuff. Yeah, just go ahead, you know, just never mind whether somebody's actually there or not. You know, you're driving a Lexus. That's cool. I understand. See, now we're back to road rage. It took about five minutes of normal I-5 driving. <laughs> Homeless camp. It, it sort of spreads, but it seems like there's fewer people around. Anyways, uh, I don't know. Is that all I got for today? I mean, look, like, I, like people are just going to try to start going back to normal. And I just hope that people are responsible about how they go about it so that we don't make the, the pathogen problem, the pandemic problem worse, while at the same time, we that are not again the are you know the r zero are not of the contagiousness of the covid nineteen continues to kind of be mm, it's gonna be a little bit of a, a mystery until we get you know uh antibody testing and all these other things so what risk are we actually at? And if our behavior and social distancing and such changes the R naught, then maybe we can go back and conduct our business appropriately uh, and safely. And what did you stop? It was a green light. Oh my god! See, Seattle drivers are the worst. I've driven here for like over a decade, and they—they're just awful, and they're awful in ways that are sort of unassuming. So, like this lady, do you want to cross? You can cross, I'll let you cross. See, I'm at an intersection and I stopped and I said, hey, wait, I waved her across. I said, hey, go. Seattle drivers will stop in the middle of the block when there's no intersection and wave you across. And you're like, I, you're wasting gas accelerating again after you know, stopping for me, and I just wanted you to go by, and then I would have crossed the road. Like, that's a bad driver to me. Like, you're misprioritizing things. And if you think, I'm a bad driver, I just let that guy walk across the street. That was like 500 points right there. I just let that walk across, because I didn't want to deal with, I didn't have time to deal with it today. A bicyclist walking his bike is worth more than a bicyclist riding his bike. I don't know if you know that. Anyways... I guess I'm all out of I'm all out of relevant feedback for the day, but keep an eye out. I saw espresso shops open today, coffee shops. I see way more traffic. I see way more foot traffic, and I'm seeing an uptick in homeless, transient activity. Uh, homeless people just walking around doing stuff, panhandling. When the foot traffic returns, the incentive to panhandle returns. Then of course life is starting to return. The humans are the virus. Is that the meme? Okay. <sighs> okay, fine. Back in. If you
you can do it, then bravo, bro. Ah, ah, eh. Oh, he gave up, huh? All right. Okay, that's enough from me today. Remember, I go out so you don't have to. Bye.